and data today, so I will explain a little bit uh, why uh, later. So I thought it was a good idea to talk about uh, how open data is an opportunity for startups. Okay? Uh, I'm a professor, so I'm in business school, that's for, that's for the, the shoot, you know. Uh, I'm, I have a contract. Uh, but uh, I also collaborate with uh, Audi, the open data incubator for Europe, so part of the, the speech I will, uh, I will make is, is based on this activity around open data. Okay? So, first, uh, before I, I start, uh, I have a, a burning question for you. It's uh, who owns data. So you, you talk about uh, uh, data lakes and, uh, and data warehouses, but when you think about uh, your data as a, as a company, for instance, who owns it? Who is your owner of data today? Where is it? Sometimes the users. The users? They, they own it? I don't know. Um, the cloud providers. Cloud providers. That's a good, uh, good move. The depends yeah, on the cost. Sorry? Depends how much you pay. Are you going into how much you pay? Yeah. Any other? Uh, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. Any other idea? So all the data that we are uh, creating every day, basically, where is it? Who owns it? Who so the cloud provider is exactly <coughs> a big, a big uh, data owner, but. Uh, Difficult to find an answer, right? And in fact, if you think about it, there is much more question around it than, uh, than answers, in fact. Okay? So all this uh, is a uh, uh, kind of open question also around the uh, open data infrastructure. When we talk institution to institution, government to government, private companies above all to governments, it's very difficult to organize all this kind of information. So there is a lot of uh, uh, interest right now, a lot of movement around the big data, but there is a lot of pending questions around uh, open data ownership, okay? And us, as citizens, basically, we don't own our data. Everybody knows it, right? So, a couple of elements about open data, just a kind of refresher, okay? Open data is data that's available for everyone to access, use, and share. It's very simple, okay? So when you create open data, basically, the idea that the counterpart is that you have to also be able to share it. Seems very easy and very logical. But open data should be easy to access. Who is uh, working with open data right now here? Nobody? So I have, maybe I have to complete my, my speech. But open data, if you, if you work with open data, you, you realize that in fact uh, all the, the initiatives, all the, uh, the, the willingness to open data by governments, by, uh, by CTOs and so, so on, by countries, is, uh, is an intention, but when you go to the data itself, you will find some PDFs, you find some unstructured data, and open data really should be easy to use, means it should be structured, right? So a lot of initiatives right now, UK, for instance, is very advanced in that. Uh, the Obama administration in the US is pushing a lot the open data, means it has to be easy to use, it has to be structured, so. Uh, it's especially today because today is the uh, opening of the European Data Portal. It's a big initiative where you will find, if you're interested, if you, if you deal with, with, with data, you'll find a lot of different resources. Uh, work has, which has been done by, by individuals, by startups, by companies to, uh, to, uh, to give back, in fact, uh, this data on a, in a such a manner, in an easy way to access. And you find a lot of information, government data, traffic data, geolocalization data, that can be used for a lot of different uh, uh, Objectives. Uh, I mean, in research, for research, for uh, for new ventures, and so on. So this is the example of the portal. You can go and, and, and browse it. You find it. it's very easy to, to, to use, and you find a lot of different uh, resources. So there's a lot of opportunity around it. Another element is open data. Is not the same as big data, but big data can be also open. No, it's not that problem, but we find a lot of a huge amount of uh, of information, uh, in traffic data or gene data. Uh, and use big, big volume of data. Last thing, open data is not the, sh the same as uh, shared data. So going back to the initial question, uh, shared data, all this uh, data which is uh, provided or created by uh, social networks, all this huge amount of data basically is just shared, it's just the propriety of, uh, of some, uh, some players here. Uh, you can access tweets, uh, tweets feeds basically, but it's very difficult and you have to pay to get access to historical of, uh, of tweets, which is the most important part if you want to analyze this, uh, this data, right? So again, uh, some examples, you have closed data, and the vast majority of data, in fact, is closed. It's a priority of companies. Uh, all these big players are retaining the data with all these privacy uh, issues. Now they are changing their mindset, it seems, on, on privacy. It's recent. You have shared data in the middle, basically, and you have open data, but in fact, it's a very small portion of the data we create. 
So, but the question is, what would be the our environment or our our life, our business opportunities, if we had much more of this data, which is which would be open. Last, and that's something I will I will also explain that open data is good for business and democracy. Okay. Why? Because power, as uh, during a lot of uh, decades, hundreds of years, has been based on information asymmetry. Okay, you have more information than your uh, you are subject, let's say, to so you have more power. And if you look at uh, how business is built, in fact, in the business world, it's about information asymmetry. So giving back information, giving back data, it's also giving back power to uh, the people that deserve it. A great example of that, of this uh, asymmetry of information, is the relationship. So, of course, uh, you can build the variables here, two indexes, you can build the correlation, okay, I don't uh, say that, but in fact, it's interesting to see that, uh, in fact, uh, open data, Readiness by countries and corruption is uh, industry uh, related. Okay, so most of the countries, Britain, Denmark, are also the less perceived as corrupted. Okay, and there is a lot of studies here by uh, by universities, by researchers that try to link corruption and, and open data. So the more the more uh, um, data is open by governments, by institutions, yeah. the less the country is perceived by the citizens as corrupt. So the more corruption, the less open data. Okay. So perception. Uh, yes, uh, what I said, it's two indexes, so it's very. Uh, you have to be cautious about this, but uh, that the trend is interesting when you browse all these data, two indexes, of course, but uh, there is a correlation behind. There is a lot of studies here. It's not, not only this study by the economist, but you have a lot of, uh, of studies and a lot of uh, sources to compare, basically. So that's very really interesting, and uh, that's really the, the the bottom of it. Uh, open data is really really uh, related to. Democracy. I'm surprised you don't ask where is Spain and uh, within Spain, Catalonia. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? So, one very important thing is that open data breaks the imbalance of power due to information asymmetry. You give back data and you contribute to uh, empower citizens, people, organizations, companies with information which is ready to use, structured. Okay, so that's why, in fact, I relate that to startups because if you expect uh, institutions, if you expect governments uh, to uh, to push this open data initiative, you can wait. Basically, some countries are more advanced, as we just saw. Okay, if you wait for uh, everybody, like citizens, people, to push initiatives, you can wait also because they don't have the, the information, they don't have the tools. So really, I think that startups, new companies, are a perfect venture to push these kind of initiatives. So through the uh, Open Data Institute, through the incubator, it's very interesting to see, uh, and here the same exactly, to see the initiatives that try to benefit from open data and to give back open data to the, to the systems, okay? That's what I want to, to share with you in fact today. For that, I'm from a business school, so in the business school you have to seize the opportunity. You have to scale up the, the market and see if there is uh, value to extract from the market. So in every uh, business speech you have to mention McKinsey, which is a consulting company. So it's good. No? So again, it's an estimation, it's uh, an extrapolation of data. But you can see here that they estimate that uh, the um, the fact to uh, to foster open data, to uh, to uh, to structure this kind of uh, government public traffic uh, geolocalization information could uh, unlock a big big potential of three uh, trillion uh, dollar. And you have the breakdown here of the industry. That's the most interesting part, in fact, of uh, of the graph. You see where the opportunities lie. Well, you can have an opportunity to set up something with open data. Education is very important, and you th think about it, open education is also about uh, asymmetry of information. Okay? The professor and the participants, it's totally disrupted right now by, uh, by more information, by uh, information about uh, public systems, by information about also availability of the, of the courses and knowledge. Okay? Transportation, access to traffic, uh, data is also something that disrupts a lot of the, the market. Consumer growth, utility, a lot of uh, initiatives and utility also, and so on and so forth. Okay? Just for you to have an idea of sectors of interest. So, bring back to uh, the status of countries in terms of development initiatives, is Spain a good spot for open data? Okay? So, another index uh, called the Global Open Data Index ranks basically based on types of data, they, uh, they browse of the, of the source of data or open data. So you have uh, national statistics, government budget, uh, you have also government spending, it's not the same as budget, okay, what do they spend the money? 
Okay, they can be transparent, you see, on the budget. They are less transparent on how they spend it. Uh, and so on. Now you have uh, geolocalization data, uh, population uh, estimate, census. The US Census Bureau, for instance, uh, said that uh, a couple of weeks ago that they were going to open everything to the, to the, to the population. That's really new. And Spain is uh, rank 17. Okay? I'm from France, we are number 10, so I'm not, I'm not to presume that we are better rank than Spain. And you see a bit of breakdown, you see that uh, government spending, for instance, is uh, not really transparent. Sorry? What do color blue mean? That's uh, the level of uh, type of data. Um, red is inavailable, and uh, blue is partially available, and green is available in such a way. Okay, so you can find some, 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 some listings, some PDFs, some reports, but not uh, the, the data itself. Okay. So opening data is really to open the data in a structured way, but also to able to tag the data, relate the data, and, and link it. Okay, so it's here. So is it a good spot or no? It's a good, uh, good place to be uh, to work on open data. What do you think? Is it better to be high ranked or low, on the low part? If there's opportunity, it's, it's, good. it's good to be in the low part, but... Uh, they are more, more potential, no? Okay, so another way, you have another, also there are a lot of indexes, open data parameter, you see a bit the different dimensions, just if you want to, you have to, 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 to build it, so you have uh, elemental economy, you lower entrepreneurs and business, a lot of initiatives in Spain, and in Barcelona you have a lot, a lot of initiatives around open data and, and, and startups. So just, um, to go back to the idea of startups and what one can do with the open data, we saw that there is a, an opportunity which is different by, by sector. But I'm going to give you a, an idea. And that's what uh, Odin, the open data regulator for Europe, is doing. And uh, my collaboration with them is just to, it's, it's precisely in the monetization of this data, okay, to see that there is a, a concept and idea, and then to see if there is a, a value out of it. And how can you monetize through uh, pricing, through uh, the, the business model, basically, this, this information? So it's a big initiative to launch a little more than, little more than one year ago. And uh, with some examples okay, of, uh, of startups in, incubated there. One startup is uh, common prices, commodity prices. Okay? That's, again, a great example of imbalance of, 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 of power through uh, information asymmetry. If you look at financial markets, financial markets is big companies, big institutions that retain information and translate this information to, uh, to third parties for a high value. Okay, what they do here, they uh, collect information about raw material, commodities, 1,600 different commodities, basically, through uh, many through customs, okay, and they have built a, port a portal to uh, provide this information to a large number of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of uh, stakeholders. Okay? So from something which is the typical financial market, which is very volatile, but also uh, in the hands of a few players, they're working on opening this information and changing a little bit the, the balance between uh, the new information. Great example. Data Press do the, the same, but with, with, uh, with the present info, sorry, information. Uh, open law the same in the legal uh, sectors, the same. If you think about the information about expertise in law, you have to have uh, four PhDs basically to understand what is the current status of, of law. So giving this information in a way that it empowers or it makes every citizen expert of the of the information is a great great contribution. Plume is also a bit more, more known. They have an application if you want to, to use it. It's a great application about pollution. So they use a lot of different cities uh, pollution weather forecast information to give a, a ranking an index about the level of pollution in the cities. Okay, seems something like. A, uh, Yahoo uh, weather and something like that, it's not like that. It's something that gives, that measures, basically, the level of, uh, of pollution and also give power to the people to say that my pollution is not at the level it should be or has evolved in a bad manner, basically, and should be at the level of another city. Okay? So measuring, basically, is also uh, managing the, the change. Rent Square is also a good example. Rent Square, what they do is they collect information about the rental market. It's in the UK in this case, okay? Again, a good example of imbalance of power because rental market, you have offer, you have, uh, uh, you have lenders, you have uh, takers of, of, of rents, basically, but the way the price is fixed, basically, is always in the uh, disadvantage of uh, people that need most. So what they do, basically, they browse all this information and they use uh, 
probabilization algorithm to find the right, the fair price, which is not the right price, the fair price for the, for the city. So a new price model, basically, that rebalances also the price of uh, the square meter in the city. Okay, so it's also something which is really deserved. So energy is about uh, uh, solar panels optimization for smart application and Unix is for Barcelona. It's a uh, data-driven uh, organizational change, more about uh, the bringing science to, uh, to organizations. Okay? So, here in Barcelona, there is an example I, lo I, I, love, uh, I love very much here. This one, who knows this chart already? It's very known in Barcelona. Nobody? Anyone? You know it, no? Yes. You know, there is a, a saying that uh, there is a bar in every corner in Barcelona. You know? <laughs> and it's true. So, red is a restaurant, green is a bar, this is the Champla, la Ligula Diagonal, you know? and you can see that there is a bar and a restaurant in every corner. The startup is Eshos. Eshos Cat, basically. It's also a great example because it's a huge work that they are doing. They are using uh, open data, so location data about commerce, about census, okay? But on top of that, because of what I was saying before about the, the quality of information and the readiness of information to be, to be used, what they do, they, are, uh, they have equipped a lot of geographs that go in the streets and one by one, they scan all the locales of the city and qualify the locales. So it means that instead of uh, low, um, low accurate open data that is uh, available but poor in terms of information, what they do is that they complement this information with accurate data, and their, uh, their portal, their data, it's all the Iberic Peninsula, uh, the main cities, is 95% uh, accurate, very, very accurate. So it's a good example also that open data is fine, but also you have to uh, provide accuracy if you want to extract value out of the data. Okay. So if you want to, to grow what they do, it's very interesting. They have a, an app also, I think, um, which is very close to be launched uh, in the App Store. Okay. So, if you're ready to make an impact, you have to start. You make your startup, you come to the startup bootcamp here, you launch your idea, you find some help, basically, and eventually you can find some support for funding. Okay. So what Odin is giving, so it's funded by the European Union, the EU. And the last call is until August 2016. So you have some time to prepare your speech and your, your, your concept and your pitch, basically. And Odin gives up to 100,000 per project uh, with a lot of support also, a lot of milestones, a lot of variables, a lot of mentorship. And uh, it's a duration of six months. And it's really accelerator in complement to what you can find in, in, in Barcelona because Barcelona is a great city for all startups. That's it. Thanks. First question. No, no, uh, two things. Uh, great presentation. Uh, there is a manifesto, yes. a startup manifesto. Do you know that? No. Yes. And a document, and, and do you know if it's they address or something? Uh, I think so, yes. Because there is like the entire legal part and like you know, yes. red tape, to get the red tape and, and all that. Because exactly. it's, it's, it's a very good uh, initiative. If you, anybody has any startup, you, you guys can sign up for the manifesto. Exactly. Very yeah, yeah, very good. And uh, so the, the other question that I had is like, uh, is this uh, accelerator uh, local or is it like over? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Or is something like a. Uh, uh, um, the other UESRA that we have, that impact, uh, is similar to impact? So, but it is based in UK, uh -huh. okay, the HQ, but you have startups from uh, all over Europe. So, Finland, uh, France, uh, Spain, uh, and but UK. But you need to so be local, just like here. No, no, I don't think so. No, you can, uh, so you have, you have uh, like, uh, uh, specific periods you spend with, uh, with milestones, so uh -huh. with milestones. So, you have residential periods, very short, uh -huh. uh, but uh, you, you, you make your business when you, when you leave, so it's, uh, it's not a formal incubator, it's more like a virtual incubator. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, one, of, one, let's say one of the four, uh, I mean, condition for a fair trade is to have like transparency of information, right? I like the idea um, actually of, uh, you know, the, the English, the British, to have like a, a shared uh, price and then um, to have like a, a fixed rate. My question is, um, 
Do you think in the future that European Union could impose, I mean little by little, because here this this fund is to encourage, but to impose some countries to to have, I mean, an open data in their according to your to your to your chart before? Because of, there is some text that exists, but it's always something which is not uh, a constraint for the for the countries. So there is some things, but uh, I'm not sure that uh, someday we'll have some something which is a, a kind of law that uh, seems difficult. It would be good because it's uh, the best way to to make change happen. But uh, in terms of transparency, yes, that's, that's what I'm asking. And veracity also. Yes. Yeah, it should be it should be good. Uh, given what you read about the uh, European Union and the complexity of it, and if, if you see the, the COP21 about uh, constraining uh, country to do things, for open data, I think it would be very really difficult, but uh, one day. Okay. So, yeah. okay, three more questions. The first one was there. Yeah, I would be very interesting uh, presentation, but I was a bit surprised that you didn't touch the subject of uh, privacy, which is... Uh, is that on purpose? Or no, it's on purpose because it's a, it's a complex su subject, and of course, through the way you um, you deliver data, you have some constraints also on privacy, of course. So you have the same that it's, if it's closed data, open data. If you have a business, if you have a startup, it's the same the same logic applies, and Europe is particularly uh, uh, protected around uh, privacy. So yes, it's, it's, a, it's a big topic. I didn't want to. to too much about it, but uh, when you talk about big data, you talk about privacy, that's a big, big, big issue. There are some, are there any initiatives going on? Because if you're treating massively all this data, then privacy matters really. People who are using this data are not concerned, not interested in individual data, but no, they are interested in the, the overall uh, picture. So yes. are there initiatives going on to like uh, make anonymous uh, all this kind of data? In fact, it is when you have uh, sensitive data, for instance, you don't have any name, you don't have any... Uh, so, of course, uh, at some point, if you, if you triangulate data, you could uh, find s some information, I don't know. But uh, when the data is, uh, is provided by institutions, it's an anonymous. So there is a, there is a name, there is a... But you know, it's always the same when, when you, if you, for instance, if you, if you uh, mail that with some uh, telco data, for instance, or payment system data, at one point, at one point you, you could rediscover Names. That's a big subject, in fact, uh, about uh, audio and anonymize. Uh, another uh, any answer for it. So the same applies for open data. Okay. Yes. This, a, a Google TensorFlow, how would that fit in with open data? And sort of what they're, do you have any idea what they, what's driving theirs? Is it free? What, you know, I, the yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question, but, but what's the difference is maybe the intentions behind it, I don't know. But uh, yes, there is a lot of initiatives also by, by, by large companies like that to to provide access to information. But in many cases, there is uh, an intention behind it. Okay, the intentions behind uh, a government <coughs> locking data is not the same as uh, Google, so I don't know. Yeah, but you have, you have from, so, so open data is not on, only governments. You have access to a lot of information that also are provided by, uh, by companies. So. You can also leverage. And I think there was one more question. Somewhere here. Uh, yeah, it was similar to the privacy one, but uh, not at the personal level, but at the a level of a country. I mean, I'm pretty sure a uh, foreign country doesn't care about somebody, some individual's name, but more on the over uh, view. So, wouldn't open data represent the security to a country? In what sense? I don't know if I just know exactly how many employees there are in a specific domain. I can strike that domain, me being another foreign country. Uh, yeah, in all the cases, the more you open data, the more you, you distribute the information, you challenge the truth of, uh, of some facts. So, so the, the best way to, uh, to counter counterbalance a little. Uh, the vision of some is to, to provide information to, to many, so I'm not sure I can answer to your question. So you think that uh, if we give all the data openly available, we will actually make our economy and our organizations more stronger, yes. so they will be immune to whatever influences they are from outside. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? 
Uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I've been trying to get a lot of data from a very specific government in Eastern Europe, and I usually go to court with them uh, because they're very, very reluctant to give me any data. Uh, how would you sell open data to very, very conservative, backwards thinking uh, governments around the globe? Because we have the EU, we have Northwestern Europe, uh, uh, we have a lot of data there. In the UK, there is massive, massive amounts of data, but that's a competitive advantage that they should be using, and they are, obviously. But how would you sell it to a more conservative? I think uh, there's a lot of cases also in, uh, in Western countries, in other countries like UK at the beginning or here, and uh, the process is the same. But uh, depending on the law, but in, in the vast majority of countries belonging to the EU, for instance, they, 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 they must deliver the, the information. What they do in many cases, they deliver it in PDFs, on reports. So what, what the people do for that, even if there is an agreement, a global agreement, a consensus about opening the data, they do like, like you. Uh, they, they force it, they, they sue uh, the, the governments, they, they do through process. It's a, it's a, it's a long time, but um, all they mobilize people, they create uh, awareness around it to, to force the, the government to change mind. So doing uh, events, doing some uh, mobilization around it, that's the best way. And I think it has been the, the case for all the, all the countries, all the parts that have been trying to, to, to open more. It's a PDD in Barcelona in the same When you have some reports which are uh, uh, well, you have some, some declaration that the data is open, but it's not the case, or it's uh, not in the format that can accelerate a little bit the usage. It's a little bit the, the same problem at a different level. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.